Hi, friends. Max Alash here. On this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, we have training think tank athlete Travis Mayer and training think tank coach Mike McGoldrick on the podcast. They are both headed to the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge competition this weekend, and hopefully you enjoy what they talk about. Train along some of the best athletes in the world at the sport of CrossFit. To get a free sample week of our current training cycle, head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN. In this episode... You know what that reminds me of? Welcome to the hypnotizer. Oh, you can't hear. I forget. <laughs> Chris has no idea what we're talking about. Uh, Have we talked about that before? Yeah. In this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, we're bringing you the two men with the highest pitched voices on site. Is that true? Probably. I don't know. I feel like we're both pretty high pitched. So if you're irritated oh God, in this episode, you can, always, you can always turn it down to 0.75 speed. <laughs> We sound like real men. <laughs> Grown men. <laughs> Travis, man, we've never done a podcast together. We have it. Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty excited about this because I think there's a couple things that we could both bring to the table that are fun to talk about. One, the 1976 Olympic Games for that you. That wasn't even going to bring that up. <laughs> there you go. Right into it. That's sorry. That's how it's going to be this whole episode. Olympics? I thought. No, sorry. CrossFit Games. That's you right. To the games how many 76? Olympics have you made? <laughs> Six. <laughs> yeah, we call I it the like CrossFit Olympics. In, <laughs> no, I mean it is. It's our own Olympics. I feel like for part of this, I'm not going to be able to look at you and take you serious. Why? There's just something about Mike. <laughs> you look at your face. Your eyes collapsed. Talk sure. talk about it. What happened to your eye? You got burst of <laughs> bluffitis. Blufferitis. What's blufferitis? So I woke up one day. You bluffed on the street. I bluffed on the street, and then my eye got swollen. Someone popped you. No, so for that, for that when face was you this? have. Oh, that was face. it Friday, Thursday? I, Thursday, I woke up and my eye just kind of felt a little swollen. wasn't that bad. Friday, I woke up and this thing was like painful, and I was like, "What is wrong with my face? Half of it looked like I was a pirate. It looked like he got punched. It did. Um, and then as I worked out, it seemed like it got better. So I was like, "Oh, it's probably going to go away." Then Saturday. I mean, I, I don't know what I looked like. Noah said he was terrified to look at me. Wait, and hold then, up. Don't we need to intro him? Do people have any idea who this is? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> tra tra Dude, Travis, Traver, Travis, four days ago, it looked, Travis it looked Mayer. bad. Meyer. Yeah. Your eye was completely closed. Yeah, it was bad. And then... You look yeah. like the ch chicken and Peter Griffin where he beats his ass. That's <laughs> what you look like. So I went to a minute clinic. They gave me some ointment to put on it and I felt like it made it worse because then my eyeball actually started getting red and then I was like, mm, You get God. what you pay for. Yeah, I was like, that's not good. So then she didn't sound confident either. Yeah. She was like, you can do it one time or four times. I was like, what do you mean? Wait a minute, it's called a minute clinic? I guess CVS, the minute clinic. Uh, just okay. that's what they're called. Just quick little. Wait, that's what you call them or that's what they call that's them? That's what it's actually called. Like on that. the side of the building, huh. it'll say minute clinic. Huh. So it's like CVS and then minute clinic. Did you get your, did it take a minute? Uh, it took more than a minute. Oh. But she was actually right. So then I went to an urgent care closer to my house yep. and she was like, yeah, she was right. She just should have just given you eye drops as well. And so then once they gave me the eye drops, it seemed to kind of immediately take it away. But there's like underneath my eyelid is like a bump or something that was just swelling and not draining properly. Crazy. Did it affect your training at all? Uh, besides when I front squatted, I felt like my eye was about to pop out of my socket. It was fine. <laughs> um, but other than that, no, going upside down did not feel comfortable. So I didn't go upside down. Yeah. But you're that touch and go clean you did yesterday. <laughs> I was like, watch like your video in slow motion when you're coming out. It looked like your eye was about to pop out of your face. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Everybody's going to go back now. And Have y'all heard and stories about people's eyes actually popping out? No, but that would have been terrifying. Oh my God. I can't imagine. I've, does that really happen? Well, that, like I we're feel hanging like from the that string and someone like pushed their own eye back in or something. Oh man. Maybe not. What was that movie? Any given Sunday? You see that fo football movie? No. The dude gets like a finger in his eye or something. His eye pops out on the oh, football field. God. It's crazy. One of my brother's friends, I think it was that movie, had cancer. So it wasn't a good thing. But then he used to love driving cars super fast. And so when he'd get pulled over, he'd pop his eye out and say he was speeding home to <laughs> clean it off. No way. What? I've seen the people that can like push it oh, out. Yeah, a he had a glass bit. eye. He had a glass oh, eye. I was like, not oh. like a real eye. But so he had a glass eye. And oh, okay. So then he would like pop it out and be like, look, I'm going home to get like <laughs> clean it off. Like I need to get home. <laughs> What would you do as a police officer? All right, man. Yeah, I mean, you let him go. Yeah. You're like, oh, he's got to get home. Yeah. 
I don't think you're allowed to drive with one eye. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, man. Maybe it was a lie, but yeah. So feeling better now. Feeling better. Now training we're training. We got, Hey, hey congratulations. Oh, we are competing you. together at yeah. the, well, we're competing in the same arena. I'm going to beat you. Probably not. We're, uh, where are we going? Thompson bowling arena at the Mac yep. in Knoxville, Tennessee, May 28th driving distance. Three it's hours. So great. Short, sweet. Yep. Beautiful. I'm excited. Yep. We're doing team. You're doing individual. Pretty excited about that. It's I'm cool just glad to... there's someone else going. Yeah. Yeah. You're the only one on site going there. <laughs> you have eight people going to West coast and yep. you had other people to grant it. Grant it. No one else was to Mac except me. Yeah. And then we've calorie online, one person online. And so now we got the team going. Now we got, got the, the team, team going. going about time. Oh, it's awesome. And we're two weeks out. So we've got this week, full training next week of full training. And then Three I will a have a taper week. You do things a little differently. I do like to do things a little different. Yeah. I like to, f my body never feels a hundred percent all year round. So I don't like to feel a hundred percent Yeah. going into a competition. Cause I get, yes, you should, but I feel like it's different that my body's never used to that. So when I yeah. get into that setting, it's almost weird. Yeah. So for me, I like to train a little more leading up to it. I think the deload we had going into quarters, whatever it was called, quarterfinals, right? Quarterfinals. Yep. I feel like that was about right. Like Monday was still pretty hard. Yeah. Tuesday, relatively easy Thursday off and then start Thursday. For me, that felt good. Yeah. I mean the training volume y'all are hitting right now, like is a lot taking off a half a session. You're going to be bouncing back with energy. So yeah. Um, Even when we, I think this week we've kind of deloaded to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. I mean, you're still I doing, y'all are still doing doubles, you know, you're just not doing like, y'all yeah. didn't do triples. I did, tri triples. You did, I did triples yesterday. yesterday. Every, well, I think a few of us went and ran. Today you're only doing two sessions though. I'll have accessory work that Max has. Yeah. But so it's not like a, it's not no, like a it's hard not like session. a hard session. Yeah. That so session we just did was hard. Have you competed at Mac before? No. My first time. Got it. I haven't either. Mia has on a team historically they're known for very like regional style, heavy workouts. Yes. So I'm pretty excited and a lot of warm. They should bring out a three RM touch and go clean. Mm, you think you do all right in that? I think so. What if the three RM with no pause at the hang, not even on the final rep, there wasn't a pause. <laughs> there was no pause. There was a long hesitation, hesitation to regripping. There Whatever. was no actual pause that was taking place in that lift. Hmm. Yeah, there might've been people. Some of the first comment was, but Travis, it says no pause. <laughs> Deadlift Silence. 350 and let's see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Chumps. I think I like, I like, uh, from the workouts I've looked at in the past from those guys. I mean, I don't know how different it'll be now. You know, they, I guess the game said that they're overseeing the workouts, but they're not, they're not really. Yeah. So. From what I heard on the podcast with O'Keefe, he said there, or I didn't hear it. Someone told me that he wasn't or that CrossFit wasn't overseeing yeah. what was actually happening. So I never really looked back at the Mac events because I was like, oh, CrossFit will probably change it to be yeah. more in line with all the other events. But now it kind of sounds like it's just going to be free are, reigns to do whatever you want. Are people that basic in the sense that like, you know, you can predict their programming or do people sure. like having their stick? Well, I feel like even if you went to Wadapalooza, you kind of always had an idea based around Guido because he wrote the workout. So you yeah. kind of knew like, like pistol skill based gymnastics, yeah. muscle ups, kind of handstand walk. But they're that predictable that you can say that's, that's how they do you it. You just look at the years in the past and they've kind of been trending. I think the same, I think when the same person writes the program you just have biases, right? Like yeah. you just, you don't even realize you're writing those biases, but you, but you do. That's crazy. I mean, granite games, the last yeah. couple of years for me was always good. Strong because, man running. Yeah. Random stuff outside the gym. Yeah. Which was the stuff I like doing. So like the long runs, then you had like the GHD sandbag hill ruck, like just different things like that. That's, that's not to say we're like training that way. We're definitely not training with anticipation. We're training with what we know about the events. Like yeah. they've announced air runners. I mean, um, true, true forms. Form. Um, so we've been on the true form a lot. Yeah. Does so. Castro have a bot, like a way that he does I things? Don't, He's Cause really, I feel like I if feel I was like, running one of these places, I would purposely try not to be this, but I feel like for him, there's such a variety and he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Like there's no limit on like space or equipment. Yeah. Like he could have rogue build something if he wants it mm -hmm. or you're at the ranch or somewhere else. Like there's no limitation on like what can be done where at other events like Mac, you're inside of arena. Like you can only do so much inside the arena. It's not like you can go run a hill and do hill sprints or something. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you can kind of rule some things out and like, like for example, like on a team setting, if there's, I doubt they're going to have multiple runners per team. They're probably going to have one, two at most. Like they did that at regionals and even that was like super crowded. So that, how you train that as a team is pretty different. You know, like we're still running as a whole group just for like a better training stimulus, but doing things where we like are on and off the runner, I think is probably more, uh, probably more to be expected. Yeah. That would make sense for teams. Yeah. But so y'all, so y'all feel like Murph's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Memor- Memorial day weekend, it would make sense. They I don't think about best. There's the true form. I don't think anyone would be surprised. Nope. That's going to be nasty. If it's right at the beginning of the First, event too. just get super sore and deal with it all First weekend. Workout, let it happen. Oh, it's gonna take me 20 minutes to get into an overhead squat the next day. <laughs> what if there is no squat? Yeah. What if it's just Murph for every workout? Yeah. Yeah. What if, what if you never know? What if it, what if that eye closes up again? Golly. So Mike, it's you've been not that bad. You've been writing some of this dude's strength work. Yeah. Um, a lot, a lot of strength since work when? back in like October. And, and so now I, you're all I, fired, and I fired Max and brought on <laughs> Mike and Brandon. Um, Max was just getting too old and rustic. So we had rustic. Bring, yeah. You know, so we had to bring in some new guns over here. This yeah. Guy. And it's working. No, it is. No, Strength. I'm just kidding. Max, I feel like I always knew how Max would write the program. So even when we deload or structured of what I wanted to do, like it was always kind of the same. Like you just talked about, like you have biases on how you write things. And I mean, me and Max, it's almost 10 years that we've been working together. So you kind of have an idea on how that's always going to work. So for me, I feel like after the games, it was kind of like, all right, well, you got, you need a full reset to just do something kind of different, but still keep it within everybody here. And I always knew how they Brandon and Mike kind of wrote and I enjoyed both of them. So it was kind of easy to be like, I'd like more eyes that are in the gym that can help and just a different point of view. So then I approached all of them of, Hey, would this be of interest? And then, yeah, I mean, we came together as a team, right? Like to, to help with some of the programming, like, like Max still coaches you. I mean, he still does pretty much everything else. Yeah. All my communication is pretty much yeah. still through Max. Right. But like having, having a couple of different uh, opinions and eyes on, you know, like tweaks and things. And it's, it's worked well. I feel like you just like trusting us, yeah. right. You had really good strength gains. You were strong leading into quarterfinals and you've, you've done a really good job maintaining your strength right now that the, the running volume is upped a lot. Yeah. Um, your body started feeling better. So it was just good changes. I think just what about uh, when you took over the strength stuff, when you first met with max, how did that conversation go as far as like trans, you know, figuring out what he was doing and how you wanted to change it moving forward? I mean, look, Travis is a very, he's a pretty resilient athlete. So I don't want to act like there's like any magical key or potion to it. Like we sat down and actually put it, the responsibility on Travis, like, look, we're going to give you linear strength structures and we're going to expect you to stay to these and take care of your body and not, not use any excuse. It only of took like, one time of me messing up, tweak my back. And then I was fine. Yeah. Like, like stick to the percentages, listen to what we write and no more excuses of like, I'm taking on a lot now. I've got four kids. Like not that you were ever using your family as an excuse, but you do get, don't bring my family. <laughs> into this. You hear it's me? easy to think like, okay, because I have these extra responsibilities now I can't handle more. And we yeah. just put it on you to own up to that. And like, you want to be the best athlete you can and try and win the games. Like this is what's expected. And yeah. you know, he, he rose to the occasion up to this point. And I'm going to keep rising. <laughs> rising. I mean, it seems like you keep doing some pretty impressive stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, including I think winning, what was that? Quarterfinals? Quarterfinals. Yeah. I mean, I think for that, it was more the mindset of just like, don't have a process or an outcome focused result of like, Oh, I want to win. I need to win this workout. I need to take f- top five. Like for me, it was just, go in, here's your paces. This is what you need to try and hold. This is when you should break more or less. And then for me, I was happy walking away knowing that I gave my best and whatever happened just kind of happened. Um, and then I think after the quarterfinals, after the event two or after the front squat and stuff, I was like, well, I'll be probably sitting pretty well. Just, yeah. I knew off of the test and then come to find out I ended up winning. Um, outside of the training itself that you were doing, right? Like, you know how to go into the gym and work out hard, but what did you clean up outside of that that you think has made a difference, especially like since October? The mental side, food, dialing, cooling down, stretching, just like the little things I always kind of skipped. Yeah. Or it'd be like not prepping as much meals at the beginning of the week, not staying on top of things, 
did you get to a point where you're like, you just didn't think that those had that much of an impact anymore? What do you mean? Like what made those slip? What, what caused the slip? Oh, I think I just didn't think it mattered as much. Yeah. And then now having four kids and running the gym and still having to be an athlete, everything has to just be dialed in. So it'd be like, Oh, I forgot my lunch today, whatever. I'll just kind of make it up later in the afternoon. But then it just started to feel those effects into the second workout, third workout. Yep. And it was just slacking on my part. Like it wasn't fully submerged into like the process where I always kind of was like throttled. I don't want to say throttled back, but yeah. I wasn't a hundred percent in when I would say I was yeah. where I'd be like, yeah, I'm in it, but I'm not fully in it where yeah. it's not like, yeah, this has been months of me, like keeping my nutrition dialed in meditating every night, journaling every night, doing the recovery things that I need to do. Yeah. It was like, Oh, I do those two weeks out and yeah. think I'm magically going to get right. better, which yeah. not enough doesn't time. happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've, um, uh, you have a, you seem to be really disciplined with your time in terms of the quality that you do things too. Right. So I think for anyone listening to this, that's, you know, got a family running a business, like you have four children, you run the gym and you're training to be and continuing to be one of the highest, yep. af- highest level athletes in the sport. You, when you leave the gym, you're done, right? It's family. You're finding things that are restful. And I think where people run into a mistake is that it all kind of blends together and they don't really have the ability to turn those things on and off. Yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, I know you maybe don't even think about it in that way, but yeah. So, I mean, one thing, so working with a mental coach was like, you have like the athlete cap, your competition cap yeah. and your family cap, kind of like you have all these different caps you have to put on. Um, so how many me, caps do you have? I have a lot. Mm. Um, but it's like when I'm here training, like the time is spent training and focusing on that. Then when I'm done coaching or training, then it's like, okay, now it's time to coach, be the athlete, the gym owner, the guy that's going to be helping members sign up, do whatever, answer those questions. Then when it's back to training, go back to that as focus. And then when it's going home, then it's like, okay, now we're done with the training side of things. The focus is now on the family. But even yesterday I got home and I still needed to go run three miles. So then it was like, Hey, I'm home, but I need to go do this. So then I go run for 30, 40 minutes, come back. And then now my whole time is spent with them. But I feel like I'm just my wife is very wonderful person to be able yeah, to I was going to say you come home and you're like, Hey babe, I've got to go do this run. Yeah. And if she's not supportive of that, it, you're not going to have a great I'm, session. Yeah, Cause you're out there like crap. I got to like, I gotta you're distracted up. and like, I got to be home. I feel bad. Yeah. But if she's like, go do your thing. I got yeah. this. You yeah. Can go so crush the run. from that side of things, I think she knows that as well, that like, this is what I'm doing to provide for our family. And like, I have to do these things. And as difficult as it is, like you just kind of have to, yeah. we're both, I'm going to support her and whatever she wants to do. And she's doing the same for me. And so who knows how much longer we have in this, but I better make the best of it. And yeah. was that, I think, was that more difficult early on in y'all's relationship? Like maybe No, I think we, or? I think she, I mean, early on when we first got together, I used to be like, yeah, cross it's my girlfriend. Like pretty much like my focus is competing and, she's and training. Your, your wife is your mistress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but back then, like she always knew like, that's what I wanted to do was compete full time and train and try to win like yeah. that's, And so I think she always understood that since day one. And then we've just always had a very good balance of now's my time to be at home and I'm going to focus my time there. And now I need to go train. And so I've been able to separate. I feel like those just very well and be okay with that. Like I don't yeah. go out. I don't go hang out with a bunch of friends. Like I'd like to, when everybody goes out, but I mean, I have a family and that's where I need to spend my time when I'm at home and not taking away from them. And so Ma, you're four, you're three boys and your girl, your friends. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> it. But then there's even times when they'll be like, dad, you're going to the gym again. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah I have man. to. So it's like, yeah. it sucks having to do that, but yeah. hopefully this is setting it up better for the future that then I do have even more yeah. time. Like, I mean, I'm still at home a lot, but it's different too. Cause like people too, they, they may not from the outside may not understand. They're like going to the gym and it's like, no, I'm going to work. Yeah. It just so happens to be that the gym is like my work, playful work area. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's like, I'd wish I'd do what you did. And I'm like, okay, well come train for yeah. eight hours a day and do what we do. At the yeah. same time you're sitting down at a desk doing your job. I'm doing that just physically. Like yeah. it's not, this is where I get paid. This is what I need to do. So I just have to separate those things. Yeah. And I think people just look at it as like, oh, you just work out. And it's like, well, no. Okay. Do you stretch? Do you cool down? Do you do all these other things to take care of your body? Okay. Now do do that four times. When was a day. the last time you did a workout? What, what does that mean? <laughs> Not training. 
11 years ago. <laughs> so once you started, it's been training ever yeah. since. Yeah. I mean, when I first found out I wanted to do CrossFit, it was like changed my diet, changed everything immediately. Yeah. So it's kind of been ever since Yeah. I started, it's been full blown training. <laughs> Going back to Lauren a little bit, something that I've always thought was really cool that I admire is how real she is with you when you're <laughs> slacking. <laughs> Right. Like she's called you out multiple times. Like, well, here, I will read what just happened. What's so the most we just, recent? I mean, this is what, let's see. This she was, call you out on the fucking hang, <laughs> resting in the pot in the hang. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. If she didn't know. Um, uh, three rep max my ass. <laughs> so at 10, 12. So we did, what we did was like echo bike sprints. And then we did one minute ski rest, three minutes, one minute bike or one minute row, one minute bike. And you had three minute rest in between those and you did two full sets of that. Yeah. So you're like max effort for all those kind of like an acid bath kind of like feeling. So I got done and then I was like, Oh, well there's throwing up again. She goes, wow, you newbie. Like, so just like little yeah. things like that of like calling you out of just different yeah. things. But no, she always has when she watches a workout or I feel a certain way, she'll be like kind of very blunt and real yeah, tough love of the same thing Max would say. Yeah. And at times I'm like, I don't want to hear what Max would say. I want you to be supportive, <laughs> except I know that is the supportive side of yeah. her. Wow. That's yeah. really cool. Actually it is. Yeah. yeah. So at yeah. first it was, a, uh, I mean, it's a learning curve yeah. to like get used to. Cause I'm like, not Whoa, take it personal. No. Hey, yeah. uh, uh, even though I know she's doing it to make me better. It's just like in the moment you're like, no, yeah. you need to say, Hey, that was great. Even though I didn't do good. Yeah. You know, but mm. now she'll still say, it, but now I know yeah. like, or I'll know when I finish like, mm, yeah, I know. I yeah. get it. You don't have to say it. Hey, put in the comments down below. If you want Lauren on a podcast, that's, that sounds yeah. like a oh, fun man. one. Yeah. Well, that'd be, I'd be interested to see what she would say. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll interview, I'll interview her about you. Yeah, that's fine. And you just have to sit here and take it. Oh, <laughs> you don't get to say anything until it's all done. <laughs> I want to hear her side of everything. I don't know if I could be quiet for that long <laughs> to not chime in and say something. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an interesting dynamic, but hey, it's worked. You know, you guys yep. seem like a great team. Brandy and I have an interesting dynamic too, right? Like husband and wife both competing and having That's a child now. It is. It's tough. I mean, it's and a, I feel like on the same team. Like that. I yeah. feel like that's just we've competed together for a, <laughs> uh, several times. Um, we compete together very well, but we've never competed together with a kid, and that's been like a huge challenge yep. in all this. Like straight up without having people supportive on site, like it'd be impossible, you yeah. know, like Liam gets sick. Like we, we, we don't have grandparents here. So like, you know, don't got anywhere to take we, don't, we don't have anywhere to take our kid. Like <laughs> you just leave him at home. Yeah. The, his, his school randomly closes for two weeks and we're like, all right, well, he's coming with us to train. You know, we're going to roll around in his car while we're resting between intervals. Yeah. So it's been, that's been definitely, um, a learning experience and a challenge, but you know, you, I mean, uh, it makes you get you it done. It. I mean, yeah. it's definitely hard in those times. And then you like skip out on different things, but then at the end of the day, it's like, yeah. what's well, for them? Like, yeah. Yeah. We, we have to like, we have to share our fitness, right? Like um, we both, we both want to train super hard and it's very important to each of us, but we also have to realize and meet in the middle, like, all right, like I can't take up the whole day training. Yeah. Like she's got to get her sessions in too. And like, we both meet in the middle on that. Yeah. That it's was, definitely different. I mean, cause Lauren's not here training full time to compete. So it's right. a little different with like our time. Yep where like, she just wants her like 30, 40 minutes to do her workout yeah. where I'm like, I need seven hours to do my workouts. Yeah. Like it's just different. So the fact of like, if both of us had to do that, that would be extremely difficult. Yeah. What Ops are you going to do? You go home, you go home tonight and she's like, I have three hour Peloton. Good luck. I bet. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm taking I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't ever. Yeah. I mean, she does. Peloton, I enjoy right? hanging out with all my kids and it doesn't ever like stress me out yeah. having them all. So for sure. me, it's just like, okay, yeah. all right, go do whatever you need to do. You I get, sometimes you get to think, hang out with your kids. Yeah. I sometimes think she thinks she needs to be there and like helping and do stuff. And I'm like, all right, well they're with me on Tuesday, Thursdays and I got it. We get it. Yep. I mean, just they'll I took, survive. I think I took, uh, I do on, my best on Mondays. Survive. I take Liam and I have him pretty much the whole day. And sometimes we get stir crazy at home. You know, like he just like the dudes like me, like he can't sit still in one place. Like he's got to move around and yeah. do new things. I don't know if all one and a half year olds are like that, but he well, 100% doesn't, just all like, over the doesn't like to be held, wants to just move and walk around. Yep. So I took him hiking yesterday and we went to the lake and we went down to this embankment and I cooked him macaroni and cheese. He did it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, it's dinner time. Oh, I have my cook kit with me. So I made a macaroni and cheese and we sat at the lake. It was awesome. Oh, he loved it. Cool. Except he like didn't want to sit there and eat. He wanted to 
keep playing. Play, but I was like, you're going to fall off a cliff. I can't let you, bro. You know, tough love. Well, you're saving, <laughs> you're saving his life. I don't know if that's tough love. It's like, hey, you're about to die. He, let me save you. He did not understand. One what, day that, he will, though. Oh, of like, hey, you're really close to the edge yes. over there. <laughs> Get back. Get yeah. back. Man, he's in, no, that's cool. He's in the mirror phase right now. Everything I'm saying and doing, he's copying. It's awesome. Just keeps getting better. That's what they I mean, say. I know you have all stages right now. I, I was sitting the other night out back, just like chilling. And I didn't realize it's never sunk in when someone's like, man, wait till they're like around two years old and they're able to just like run around. That's like the hardest. Cause they're into everything. Yeah. Cause like they're, he's not at the point yet where he doesn't like understand falling is like bad in danger you know like he'll be like the top of something my head and he's 10 like, times a day yeah he's just like oh, i'm gonna fall off this bed i'm gonna fall off this couch <laughs> and like so it's just constant maintenance you know like you can't let the guard down and i was sitting there last night and i was like wow like we're in it yeah it's awesome what's funny is so i mean my oldest is five and a half three and a half 18 months and then 12 weeks or whatever so i literally have all of it yeah the older two go do whatever they want yeah because they're able to. Yeah. And then Thaxton, so he's our third one. Yeah. Wants to do everything that they're doing. Yeah. But he can't because he doesn't know how to do all that. Yeah. <laughs> but he's trying so he's to trying do He's trying to do all yeah. of it. But Man, this he's going to develop fast. Oh, I mean, he was walking at nine months. He's all over the place. Yeah. But into everything. He just grabs dirt and then pours it on his head. Yeah. But with each one, you care less and less and less about what they're getting into. Cause you're like, they're yeah. going to, they're going to be fine. They're going to survive. Yeah. Like I think the first one where you're like, Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. And then now I'm like, all right, well I told you not to do that. Yeah. Told you, <laughs> even yeah. though like you don't understand, but then the moment it's like, come on. Yeah. I feel like Liam and Thaxter are kind of in that like drunk college kid phase. Yep. Let me just do whatever I want. Just like foods everywhere, <laughs> running into everything, eating, they everything. can walk, but it's not in a straight line. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. like they've been drinking all night. Yeah. I think we, I don't know if we've talked about it in, in shows before though, but obviously more children, more responsibility, less time. What has it done to training in terms of uh, prioritizing and, you know, where does that, what does it look like back when, you know, you had one child now you have four? What kind yeah, of I mean, changes? I think it's just more of a, you just have to keep everything structured yeah. more. Like when we show up, like, Hey, we're starting at nine 30. Like I need to start at those times to make sure I'm home. How is that with the onsite group? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's actually got way better. Cause how, how like many other a, onsite people ate and eight none of them nine. have children? No. Um, but you're like the timely one. You're kind of like the guy who gets in and you don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm starting, yeah, I'm, starting this time. I'm starting regardless. Yeah. Um, if I see it starts like they're just showing up and I'm like, no, like I need to be done. Then I'll just go ahead and start. I, I, yeah, it's not like a disrespect to them. It's like, no, yeah. I have other things I have to yeah, go you do. And, and yeah. those are my responsibilities. Like most of them aren't at home. They traveled here to come compete on site and be here to train like this where I'm like, okay, well you're still in my gym. I still have to go home after this. I still have to take care of my kids. I still need to take them here that I have to be done close to these times to get home, to make my wife's life easier, my yeah. life easier. So it's just a balance, but I think everybody's gotten better. Like we've all had talks and then yeah. a bunch of meetings on like Saturday. And it's I was like, going to, I was going to ask. So you've always, you've always kind of trained in isolation a little bit, yeah. right? Like you, you, we have people come in town and like you've had Bernier as a consistent training partner for probably the longest, yeah. like Noah was here for a bit, but he, he left for a while. Um, Will had come in, you yeah. know, here and there. But now these guys are here really consistently and you're training with them almost daily. What has that done to your training? I mean, I think it just levels it up to like a different degree yeah. where when you're by yourself, I mean, I still think I can push myself pretty hard yeah. individually by myself. Yeah. I think it's just that extra, like when you're deep in the pain cave, what little more, cause you know, they're like right there, like getting yep. that extra little bit out of it versus I don't know slowing down like the slightest yeah. by or yourself. Or you're by yourself. You think you're doing great and you really have no idea. Yeah. Right? You're just going by feel, but like that could be completely untrue. Yeah. And, and then you, you see get, other times you're like, Oh, yeah, like, I crap. probably should have gone faster on this. Yeah. But yeah. having live feedback, you know, with the person next to you, Bernie today, pushing you on some of the ergs on yeah. some of those sets. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, it's interesting. Cause I, I don't know. I feel like part of that is I still feel like I can go that hard by myself. Yeah. Regardless if someone's there or not, like I don't like the competition helps, but I think that's like sometimes like Noah, like he competes at like a 
totally different level than yeah. what, the way he trains. Yeah. And I think he's gotten way better at that. Like just based off of how we've been training, like he's yeah getting, getting to that point out he's of his bringing, comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think I compete really close to where I train at because yeah. I try to train at the highest level I can every single time and try to pull that out. And so I think I'm always pretty close to that. Yeah. I think it just helps with that extra 1% when you see they're like one or two calories ahead, like pulling that extra harder. But for the most part, I feel like it as an individual, I can still do it pretty close. What do you feel like makes a good training partner now that you've had this group here for a while? Time the energy. <laughs> yeah. I feel like just the energy around like when everybody's fired up and lifting it, just like, the strength it's sessions, the whole, yeah. all of us, you can tell are like fired up and excited to get after it. Even on like the conditioning stuff we just did, it's just easier to go through it all together. Like yeah. you, when you know, we all feel the same way. We are all experiencing the same discomfort, but, and you know, everybody is, but at the end of the day, you're like, all right, nice work. Like yeah. you're doing it together where in other sports, I feel like it's kind of different, but in this, it's we, pretty cool. We know that like doing the throwdown brings um like doing metcons competitively with one another brings the you know brings a lot out of athletes across the board but i think the big thing that we've seen with having the on-site environment with this many people doing like an entire strength session together that's really pushed people to like raise up their levels to make it almost like equal across the board like bernier's squat strength is like blown up yeah. you know because he's seeing what you guys are doing and he's not second guessing himself he's believing that like okay i can hit these numbers and you just got to try because you're like well they all got yeah. it on and i need to try it and and you were you know trying to flex on him like i'm going to touch and go 350 today that's right like, establish dominance that's it that's i'm what mean, here to do i think across the board the strength sessions but you guys aren't necessarily like going against each other you're sharing the no. work and, yeah. and i, I mean and we still base it all off of our percentages yeah it just still helps the entire environment of everybody doing the work that yep i hey, mean we're all going for it. we're all feeling that same burn and yeah getting the strength gains that we all want you're in a metcon though you're not stopping to tell hey come on kyle i got you man you're, yeah you know, i believe in you you can do it but like in the strength sets the last two heavy doubles or singles you know noah hopping in or telling someone like you got it go for it you know just like i think that where it's more of a a supportive strength environment has really raised everyone's levels. Yeah. I mean, I know there's times where I'll just be like, come on, put it on there, put the extra two and a half on there. Just go for it and try. Yeah. I mean, cause you have no, like, this is your time to try that. Yeah. So if you fail now, you might as well fail in this scenario versus yeah. at the games or in the semis or whatever it's yeah. called. Um, yeah. I like, I like what it's doing. I like that we get a little bit of mixed strength work in and then you guys get strength tests or met con sometimes like the dumbbell bench deadlift stuff where you guys kind of oh. go in heats and you can see and learn a little bit where it's again it's not like full-blown met con like racing everyone across the yeah. board so i think it's been helpful i agree i mean i think it's beneficial for all of us i think everybody i think it's helping everybody in some way yeah like i'm super jealous i want to jump in them all the you time should. i wouldn't hey, last going. i know you wouldn't last uh, <laughs> you, no, would, you, so you, you and all, kyle would both we break. disappear. You guys do so much strength volume. We do. I mean, yeah. but it, I like it for me. It makes me feel strong. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing we've obviously noticed with your training is like, I mean, the second we pull it out, you come running back to, to Max and, my, and myself guys. I need, I need the progression yeah. back in. I need him back in. And I I'm mean, like, for me, it's oh, just going to get broken. No, he's fine. but it's just a, it's like a confidence thing. Like yeah. it makes me feel confident in everything else I'm doing. Like when I stop doing it, yeah, I immediately can tell. Yeah. Like, I don't want to say I feel weaker. Like I'm still strong, Yeah, but it just doesn't feel as smooth as it usually does. So I'm like, no, nope, I like to keep doing it. Yeah. And I feel like if I can maintain that and still keep my CrossFit and conditioning high, then yeah, that's the best of both worlds. Yep. And so far we've been able to maintain it. So it's just being able to keep that yeah, consistently all year. Yeah. A little bit too. You've, I mean, you still get your own individual touches, right? Like Max still writes specific things a couple of times a week. Um, but you're all, you're doing mostly the design too, right? So most of the strength yep. progressions from the design, most of the CrossFit met cons, the running, the swimming, the conditioning work. Um, what's that change been like? Whereas before like October, I think you were 100% all by yourself yeah. in all your training. Yeah. I mean, it was different. I yeah. mean, the initial switch, I was like, ah, yeah. I don't know how this is going to go. Just, I like being kind of like knowing it's geared towards me. So it was kind yeah. of like a weird shift of knowing like this is beneficial to all of us. But then once I started to like 
do it and see that, Hey, I'm touching everything. I still want to touch. I'm still having all the strength progressions. Yeah. I felt like if I wasn't getting those things, I would be more hesitant and not as easy of a transition into it as it was, but it was like, no, it's literally everything I'm still doing. Yeah. Just now everybody else is kind of doing it too. Yeah. So for me, that was kind of like an easy way of being like, okay, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's been good because I mean, we just have a large body of numbers to pull from that you can see like, okay, like on site, I got second in that, but amongst the design that was 10th. Like, okay. Like that really needs work. Cause we just have more people to look at now and get numbers from to, but yeah, I mean, you got Sam Stewart, Con Porter now, yep. all those kind of guys that are like still super fit yeah. and just overseas that we don't ever get to train with or see how they actually are doing things or what they're actually following. Yeah. So to see they're doing the same things, like, okay, you kind of have an idea on where they're going to stack up on certain workouts, just based off how you see they do. But also helps get more out of you because you're pushing knowing yeah. you've seen their score. Don't you wake up to con scores? Cause he does them before y'all <laughs> technically so yeah, that he's helps. like a full day ahead of like, <laughs> yeah, he's the knowing, test knowing, Yeah. If it's uh if it's anything aerobic or kind of like what we just did, the one minute, one minute, that stuff he's really good at. So oh, yeah, got, I mean, it's uh, on the machines. So it's good to just kind of have that advantage. Yeah. Cause I don't know if other organizations do that where if they post a giant, whiteboard of being able to see how other people are stacking up and doing. Cause most top tier athletes, everything's pretty secretive. Like yeah. you don't really know what like Frazier ever did. And he says it's in his program, but it's probably not actually in his program. Yeah. And then the same way with like Bergeron and them, like you don't know Do you what think- they're actually doing because everybody wants to keep that a secret. And I think what about rich? We know what he's doing. What is he doing? <laughs> he got to pay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, he's pretty vocal. I, I feel like about kind of everything he does. Yeah. Um, do you think that's a disadvantage? Telling everybody? Yeah. Do you no, think because sharing your training is a disadvantage. No, because I feel like you have to actually still put the work in. Yeah. Like that's like saying, hey, here's all the nutrition things you need to yeah. lose this weight. Go do it, which is out there to everybody, but yeah. people just don't want to do it. Like, yeah. They don't want to put the work into weighing their food. What do you think it on out. that, Mike? Do you agree with him or I don't know. I mean, the best in the world did it for a while, kept it a secret and it worked for him, but he also could have probably shared everything. And I don't think many people were doing it better than him regardless. You know, I think either can work. I mean, you still I don't have, think, to, I don't think you, there's one thing that's like the best answer. Yeah. I know. I feel like you still have to put the work in like even people doing those sessions. Like, okay, what if you did them all at 70%? Like, yeah, the, real stuff. So when you start going a hundred percent, yeah, then you start throwing up and then you have to go back and do another set. Like, yeah, those are the things that are going to get you better. So even if Frazier did post everything, people would start doing it, but you're probably not gonna be able to handle the volume that he did and be able to withstand yeah. the training that he actually was doing. Yeah. Right. Like if there's, here's these specific intervals, but like you, what you don't see is like the environment that you're doing these intervals in Yeah, what you're doing when you go home, the, the amount of preparation that you had leading into it. Like there's so much foundation the, you set way before you started doing any of that. I yeah, mean, like what was the setup of how the bike and machines were, were you on an assault bike versus echo bike? Were you on, like, yeah, all those things play a role into it. And I mean, I don't have a problem with sharing kind of like everything we do just cause you still have to put the work in. I feel like it doesn't matter. Like you still have to show up and do those things. And then your body has to be able to cooperate with you and not break down with that amount of volume and stuff. So, I mean, if you can, perfect. Yeah. Follow the design. Yeah, buddy, that's a good pitch. Hey, yeah. I got a question for Mike about Travis. So, mm. uh, how good it. looking is he? So, it's aggressive. Arg, matey. How good looking? <laughs> With my pirate eye. Arg, it's, matey. It's, it's, they're actually like equal right now. I feel they're pretty equal. Just, yeah. What's the question, Chris? The question is mm. do you oh, think at this normal. point, do you think at this point, all of <laughs> CrossFit media, whether it's actual CrossFit or you know, morning chalk up or any other brand is just fucking with them by not writing. His yeah. Name correctly. I think it's like the, I, I think it's the Nickelback effect. Not saying that people don't like Travis like Nickelback, but I mean, it's like, well, then what are you saying? Yeah. You it's, just compared me to Nickelback. No, I'm saying you people think it it's funny to make fun of Nickelback, even though. They, oh, I see. Yeah. Like I think they're, I th- they think it's funny to continue to misspell your name. Cause at this point it's happened so much that it's almost That's like, d- if it's, it's not on purpose, on purpose, it's you ridiculous. Think it, it if they could like spell Bjorgvin Carl Gubinson correct for real, every spell, time, and you can't spell Travis, <laughs> you could, t- you could spell the most Tra- English name <laughs> ever correctly. <laughs> Travers. That was definitely a first. I don't know where you even got that. Like, I mean, we're guilty too. I call you trailer all the time. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> spelling in a Meyer, Meyer, 
they've, they've um, they're yeah. messing up so the number times. of times you go a yeah. lot. Yeah, it's definitely frustrating. That's what I think. I think it's intentional. Yeah, at this the old point, Nickelback. Yeah, I think keep. Dude, I, you shouldn't I, have said I think that. Keep now it you're going to be called please. Nickelback. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Old More fuel Nickelback to the fire. Head. <laughs> <laughs> More fuel to the fire. That's it. I mean, yeah, it's annoying, but whatever. It is what it is. Does it piss you off? Uh, yeah. You want to train? Does harder? it really piss you off? Yeah, it really does. Good. Why? I, I mean, I think it's just like, I've been in the game long enough. Like, how are you literally still messing this up? And how many times you've been to the games? I'm like, it's everywhere of like how many times it doesn't take much research. Yeah. And if you're doing this much research to find information about me, then spell my name right. Like it's right there. Earn it. Earn what it, do you Travis. want me to do? Earn it. How? Keep earning it. <laughs> That's what I said. I said something to that to Max. I, I hope was like, you win you- the games and your trophies are misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> Traver Mayor. Yeah, but I mean it's just like where where to put oh, you, the man. energy and effort and that's not anywhere in the realm of it. So I just kind of like let it go. It's um, in the moment it's definitely annoying, but then it's just like whatever. You but, called out uh, someone, right? Who you I did just called out Tommy? morning chalk out uh, co- oh, a couple days ago I called out Tommy. Did they air of, that yet? Oh yeah, I think they did. Okay, cuz I was I mean, in it here was when just you were a, it was a small call, it. they call have out. to know. I love it. Um, yeah. I Give mean, us the playback. What, what, for which people one? are going to be Tommy curious. Them? Yeah. What happened? They asked you something and you kind of chirped back real quick. Oh, they said something the other day. Like I'm not a home run hitter. I'm not, I'm like, I really needed this win from the quarterfinals more than anybody. Like if it was Noah and some other people, it wouldn't have meant anything. Um, but to me it had to mean a lot. This is probably my last year going, um, just a bunch of things like that. Um, and so then when we were on the so that was on one episode. Then they invited you on and you said, and then Tommy said something. And then I was like, Oh, just like how you don't think I'm a home run hitter or not doing very well. And this is my last year, oh, dang, just kind oh, of dang. like a quick little <laughs> fire back. And he's like, Oh, I didn't know you were listening. I'm like, well, I mean, I'm going to hear it. Yeah. Like whatever. I mean, so, whatever dude. I mean, it's fun. I mean, I, it is what it Use is. It. I'm going there to work out and try to win. And that's what I'm going to go and do. Athletes and, get shit on all the time. So it is what it sports is. From yeah. Sports analysts. So just use it and, yeah. Fuel in the tank, baby. Yep. Filling it up. Yeah. What other que- questions, Chris? That was a good mm, one. Are there any funny, like uh good memorable stories from the on-site training thus far that stand out? Hmm. You want to throw anybody under mm. the bus? No. I mean, it's been pretty good so far. Yeah. I mean, Cedric a little bit in that last one. I'm not going to lie. Kind of skipped out on the last one because quad cramp. Come on. Week one, Noah, Noah got emotional because, uh, he thought the the men and the women were splitting. Oh, so yeah, I do remember that. That was actually (laughs) funny. So we all were getting, I think it was, we got together for one of the sessions and he's like, all right guys, I just want to bring everybody in and like, you know how Noah is just like, all right guys, come on, come on. Like, let's, he's just. You know, I think, I think we're, Happy you know, puppy. we're getting, we're getting a little separated from each other. You know, like we're, I feel like the guys and girls aren't really like in unison. And we were all like, man, I thought the energy was great. I thought we were all getting after it. We've all been doing great. And then everybody else kind of agreed. And he's like, yeah, I was just kidding. It was just a joke. <laughs> like, I didn't really mean it. Yeah. I was standing there when he was saying that. I was like, man, this feels like the most connected intermingled yeah, guy yeah. training I mean, I've ever seen in my we've life. We've all been yeah. doing every session together. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I guess I don't get it. It was a long, but it is. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> he we was, did a lot of work. He was out. drunk. It yeah, he was, was fatigued, drunk. It was funny though, because it was like, ah, I think we're all. What's doing the hardest cool. session you guys have done in the? He brings weeks. a good energy to the group, though. I like it. He does oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's a good. It's happy and hungry, baby. What's the hardest session you guys have done in the last in this three weeks since training together? The hardest session. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it was initially the first week adjusting to that much run volume for me like the running volume with all the strength still with the CrossFit, like just getting used to that. And then the second Ooh, week it was fine. Do that. Mike talk, uh, or if you know it, talk through the week, what does the week layout look for the folks? Yeah. Uh, I'll do my best to remember exactly. Cause it's like 15 sessions, but Monday I is, is a long run. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, yep. you run. Yep. Usually in the mornings yep. right now, this, this week, the structure changed a little bit as a little bit of a deload for some of the athletes. Uh, Went Monday, Wednesday, Friday strength session yep. in the middle of the day. So usually like noonish, two yeah, thirty ish, something like that. Typically after we're done, and then Monday is not necessarily a CrossFit Metcon, but it's volume accumulation with CrossFit movements. Yep. Um, usually grip related, upper body pulling type stuff. Tuesdays is recovery accessory based. After they've done um, 
On Tuesday, they do a cyclical, cyclical session, piece. hard machine work in the morning. So it's been like we did acid bath and yeah. then a big strength session. Big strength session. And then Tuesday is more individual priorities for everyone. Yeah. The third session on Tuesday is typically coaches write out whatever individual work that person needs, whether it's yeah. handstand walking, pegboard, random stuff, strength work again. Yep. That's their Tuesday and Friday afternoons are those yep. specific times for the individuals. Wednesday running hard strength session in the middle of the day. It's hard. It's intense, but it's not super long. It's heavy back squats, snatches. Hey -oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Buzzinga. One of those buttons there. Yeah. Hey, hey, what, hey, what, hey, I can't hear it. What was it? It was the, but uh, oh, nice. but, uh, it was the snare. Nailed it. Uh, and yes. then Wednesday ends with a Metcon. That's usually pretty tough. Actually more of yeah. like a, it looks like a regional kind of like CrossFit, pure yep. CrossFit. Yep. For that regional tough one. Friday we run again. Thursday you get your uh, body work. Thursday body, work, is body swimming. work, swimming. Friday is run again. Fun strength session. You get barbell cycling, ladders, yeah. more like um, some clean and jerk work, heavy percentages, but then going into like heavy barbell cycling ladders, like doing three touch and go clean and jerks, walking the bar, stripping the weight, doing two, walking the bar, that kind of stuff. And then there's another session. Typically after that. Yep. And, and that's, uh, that again is either the individual stuff, yep, individual stuff. Saturdays, the throwdown into strongman, random stuff. Sundays off. Yep. That's a hefty week. Do you have a thing you normally do on Sunday? Minus hang with the fam. Any nothing? No. You're just vegging. Cut what some do grass. you? All right. I this enjoy is, cutting grass this is, and doing yard work. Yeah. Let's say what's restful to you that some people What's restful to you and what are things that aren't that some people might consider restful? Meaning like camping out on the couch watching TV versus... Yeah, that never happens. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, yeah, that just isn't so really So judgy. Thing. No, I mean, it's just not like... Yeah. they Like we let them kind of like watch TV in the morning and then we try to like get outside, go do stuff. Um, you like cutting the grass, huh? I do like cutting the grass. It's very Me peaceful. Too. I just oh, like man. putting my headphones on, just listen to some good music and then doing yard work, trimming the bushes, cleaning up, like... That to me is relaxing. Yep. Just because it's like I'm kind of in my own environment. Yeah. You're restoring, the motor, you're restoring the order. Going, yeah. Where do you listen to usually? You have a go to? No. Corpus listen. Animus podcast? Yeah. No. Oh, no, hell no. I don't. Sorry. I remember honest. back in the day, I used to have my Walkman, you know, CDs. Yeah. Wait, and, a Walkman? Yeah. Yeah. You, and, said, you said Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> my Walkman. My Walkman. My Walkman. My Walkman. And I would always uh, go to the. Uh, Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers mm. because they have the like the gain on that album is like louder than everything else, yeah. so you could hear it over the mower better. Oh, nice! Yeah. Well, Man. now I feel like they have pretty good headphones that. Yeah. You can Back get then, away it was with the it. Yeah. dangly ass. You know. You can get away with. <laughs> I used to own a, to a landscaping company when I lived in oh, Memphis. What was Tell the called? story. What was it called? The Clipping Dales. <laughs> 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 I'm serious. <laughs> I started it when I was like 14, and I just the name just stuck. I had it until I was 18 and then got written and sold everything. Uh, but I had one of those uh, MP3 player back in the day. Like, where once, once you put songs on it, you're not taking them off. You know, it's like, it was so annoying to do. So I just listened to Incubus Science album on repeat all day long. Nice. Yeah. Did you, was it an iPod? No, it was oh. like, it was like a Plantronics or something like. It was Clippin' Dales. It was reliable. I'll say that. Yeah. yeah. Tell us your, tell us a good uh, lawn mowing story. Mm. Don't you have one? With Clippin' Dales? LLC. Is that LLC? Is there, are there good? <laughs> it was LLC. Yeah. I know I've heard some. I don't know if you want to tell them. No. Nah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I started cutting grass when I was young and then kept I buying the equipment. Thing? And I, I mean, this isn't really like funny, but I got like, I hit the jackpot. The one of the, the ladies' uh, lawns I was mowing, it was like a little zero lot property. It was like 20 bucks to mow her grass. And she comes out one day and she's like, hey, if you ever want more properties, like, I have a bunch that I could give you. And I was like, sure. Okay. And then she's like, what's your email? And she sends me an email the next day and she gives me 50 properties to go mow. And I was like, uh, and I'm turns just out, one man. turns out they are the owners of first national realty, which was like oh. a huge realty company. And, uh, based out of Memphis, they might be national now. I haven't talked to them in a long time, but they were basically properties that needed maintenance cuts. And I was like, all right, the business has begun. So like were those wait, all the Fraser houses, they were, man, they were, they were, they were some, Houses and neighborhoods <laughs> that was pretty sketchy with me going to all alone. There was Shout one time Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, there was this dude one time. I was cutting, I was like uh, trimming, and I thought I felt something behind my back. Had my headphones in. And I turn around and there's this 
dude like right behind me. And he was like, and I turned around with the weed eater. I was like, ah, and he like jumped back all crazy and ran away. Yeah. Seriously? Like, yeah, dead serious. There did were you, houses I would pull up to and I'd call and be like, yeah, I don't, I'm not comfortable. Huh. Did, did yeah. you ever listen to Fraser Boy while, while in cutting grass in Fraser? All the time. Nice. Yep. What is this? Oh, you're not talking about Matt Fraser. No, 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 no. Fraser no. Boy. Oh, Memphis, I was like, Memphis. I thought you were honestly talking about, you were like, you said that a minute ago and I was like, what Memphis, Memphis about? rap artist. Mm. Good stuff. Go yeah. check them out. <laughs> I, had a, I, I didn't have a lawn business, but I had to do a bunch of yard work yeah. growing up. That's how I made money. Oh man. I, I remember the first, uh, uh, walk behind mower I ever bought. Yeah. Oh, they're awesome. Dude. I pull up with the trailer. I've never driven one in my life. I a buy trailer it. or the, the trailer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I pull up with the trailer. I go and I buy the mower from the guy. He's showing me how to drive it and stuff. And he's like, all right, have a good day. And it's like a hydraulic one. It's pretty quick. And I'm like trying to load it onto the, it was one where <laughs> you basically neutral is like stopping. You let the handles go yeah. and it's like full throttle and you squeeze them down. It goes in, <laughs> in the reverse. Wait, that seems stupid. It's tough. It's, uh, but it's actually really fast. Like the more you squeeze, you go back. So you can kind of like, you can like move Control. in and out. Yeah. And I like, I'm, dr he's like, I'm like driving up the ramp and he's kind of just sitting there watching and I'm like 16 years old. Right. <laughs> and I like let go and it flies up the ramp and I'm about to drive into the back of my trailer and like probably hit the truck. So what do I do? <laughs> Naturally you squeeze <laughs> and I hit the truck, squeeze, it launches backward in reverse. I fly off of it and the thing's just like, goom, 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 no goom, way. Goom. yeah. In the trailer, he like runs up and pulls the key out. It was super sketchy. And then he let you drive away like, with it. It was like six thousand dollars. He was like, "All right, good luck, kid." <laughs> wow, <laughs> I know it was nuts. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, oh, man. man. Yeah. Old lawn cutting business. Lawn cutting. World. Did yeah. you ever get any like weird uh, calls when people were looking at Clippendales? Like anybody like, man, misunderstand old your lady, business. Old ladies would call me all the time to cut the grass. I'm serious. <laughs> because yeah. they wanted something else in return. I don't know. <laughs> Were they ever like dolled up? No, I like, know why. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, that was part of my, my, my marketing did strategy. Did you do it with your shirt off? Did you cut with your of shirt course. off? Of course. Memphis in the summer, man. You had to. What was your first job? I did that. Cutting grass? Yeah. I mean, so my dad owned a landscaping business. And oh. then, so like when you we were like downs. 12, it was like, hey, cut the grass, do all this stuff. Yeah. And then, so I started doing it in our neighborhood just for a bunch of people. And then I wanted to race motocross. So part of the money I had to get was to be able to ride. Yeah. So then that's how I pretty much started. And then I pressure washed vacuum oh, nice. neighbors' houses. Pressure I, washing. That's that's next dude, to don't grass. Don't ever do oh. it in sandals. I was oh, like well, 14 well, and just I wasn't thinking. Yeah. I just was like, because I we always did foot? it. Oh yeah. Oh, and I, I just was like back oh. and forth on this set of stairs on this deck. And then so like my foot's on the next stair and oh. I just went right across and just the skin just oh. ouch. Oh. So I was like, well, don't I would do, do that, that shit for free every day of the week. Really? Pressure wash you my back patio. Dude, please. All if right. you, do you have, do you have a pressure washer? I do. I have a pressure washer. So and I have one of those satisfying. I have one of those round giant, things. Dude, that, I want to yeah. do Max and John's old house. Have you seen their driveway? I can't. Oh, it's it's like 20 years. I know you're taken. serious right now. This is great. Oh dude. Pressure washing. Nothing like it. I just like anything where you could go from you clean to dirty. You can immediately you put like see a that. vacuum, a line, when you or you mow wash, a line. It actually looks like those Tide commercials where they have like the shirt before yeah. wash, oh, the and shirt then after. <laughs> Dude, I haven't tried one of those circle things. I want to. It's great. Yeah. What's a circle thing? It's like got like three or four heads inside of it. So then when it's like spinning, you're actually taking up it, this much surface area yeah. versus like a small line. Oh back no, I don't like, want it to go any faster. No, no, no. It's like a plastic dome, right? Mine is, and oh, it's I've got some like it's got this. Yeah, yeah. Mine's only like this big though. Mine's not is a it? huge. It's not a huge pressure washer, and it spins around. And you basically like it's like using a vacuum cleaner almost. Like okay, you just run down. Kind of like the thin strip that I was yeah. accustomed to. This is a lot faster. You can like spell and it your doesn't, name. It doesn't spray stuff everywhere either. It's actually like doesn't get all like over the house and all the dirt and stuff. Yeah, hmm. it's nice, it's good stuff. Yeah. Do you think we lost everyone? Yeah, I think so. so <laughs> let's go ahead and wrap it up. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, that's what everybody. Mm, it's time to time <laughs> to birds chirp with blue light. It needs to be. All right, guys. You know they can't all be winners. We did our best. We'll see you next this week. Yep. Stop. Peace.